Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at Text Talks History, A Christmas to Remember. Now, I don't know what this is because it's an entirely new thing Texas is doing. I'm actually really looking forward to this because, one, I like Texas narrations. I like how he pulls everyone together in the Black Pants Legion to do some crazy ass shit. And also, I just want to see what he's going to do with this. I've seen what he did with random games. I've seen what he did with Battletech. And honestly, I've then gotten into another hobby that admittedly is cheaper than Magic the Gathering, but that's a very low bar. So we're going to see what he's going to get me into here. Maybe I'll become a Christmas fanatic here. You know, if this makes me enjoy Mariah Carey somehow, I'm going to hold that against text. More importantly, you guys know the other. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up and let's just go see what the hell Tex is bringing up because I'm really curious. Let's check it out. Old timey, all right. Like it, nice intro reel and oh, they're really going old timey. The Black Pants Legion presents. I'm going to use this the broadcaster voice. Biplanes? Ooh, drum lead in. The old crowd, definitely in the 20s. And the plane's down. Also known as me playing a flight simulator. Oh! Okay, so one, we've already set the tone, and two, having just watched Lackadaisy, this is really freaking on point right now. Okay, this is definitely 20s. This is pre... Is this... Christmas? It's 20s. Text does a lot of war stuff. You know, I don't know what we're getting into, but I think we're in the right area for this is like, what, World War One related? I don't know. Also, I love this font. It's like, I've never found a way to use it myself, but I want to use this font. It's so like an Art Deco style, and I just love it. Which is weird, because I don't think they actually use that font in Art Deco. Did they? I actually don't know. But it feels like it. Wait. Dr. William Wheatley Christmas. Safety Factor 7? Wait, there was a guy named Chris. They just hit them with planes. This doesn't feel like a YouTube video. This feels like they're starting a movie. Okay, apparently Tex made a history movie. I kind of dig this. The Black Pants Legion movie. Yeah, I was trying to go for a southern Louisiana accent there. Failed. Oh, and they're warping the plane while they're flying to show movement. Also having the background moving is- And they hit with lightning! Simple animations, but they add so much! Narrating written by Mr. Tex now. And there's hitting- Whoa! Wow! That is- Okay, one, I recognize the art style from some of the- Actually, a lot of the Tex Talks Biotech videos. The Dr. William Whiting Christmas effect. So his name's actually Christmas. Except no substitutions. I don't know why when I think 20s, this is the voice I use. It's just going to keep happening. I have no control over it. That is, that looks like someone who's very much into medicinal practices of the 20s. <laughs> oh my Howdy god. Howdy folks, and welcome to Text Talks History, a series which I hope will serve to entertain and inform while maintaining yep. some semblance of actual historical professionalism. For As someone who knows just how professional most real stories are when written down, you got a very low bar, you're fine. Very first topic, a Christmas to remember. To give this story context, we must begin at the turn of the 20th Whoa. century. When some oh yeah, these were basically kites that had a fan in the front. Uh, Santos Dermon, 14 bis. I've seen pictures of these and usually of them crashing when they have video of it. it like they seem to crash in midair and then they land in that order. The very bold pioneers combined the fun of handmade engines with oh, God, the that one. of handmade glue. Wait, this is the Philips multiplane that actually had a name? You know, it's basically a radiator design now that I think about it. Would suck as a plane, but it's basically a radiator, yeah. Gliders to finally determine once and for the all the vampire what actually flew. The glider actually that might work. Just nope. in the process. Right. Oh, that worked right up until it did it did someone's house. Oh my god. Not within a thousand years, well man, ever fly. Obviously. It was way, way, way faster. Wilbur Wright, 1901. <laughs> that was one of the Wright brothers. Wow. Also, this is a picture of Wilbur Wright. I'm assuming it's a picture of Wilbur Wright. Holy shit! I don't. You know, now that I think about. It, I've always seen their plane. I've never seen them. Huh. Preamble. <laughs> Eight days before Christmas, 1903. 
the Wright brothers made That's history. That's Wilbur and Orville, wow. After much experimentation, frustration, and failure, Orville and Wilbur Kitty Wright's Hawk, success yeah. at Kitty Hawk proved that practically anybody could make a plane. Yep. Even two brothers from Ohio whose entire engineering experience up to that point was more or less bicycles. Before that day, they were crazy small business owners with grand ideas. After Okay, little context here. This right now, what Tex is covering is super nostalgic for me because my dad is an aircraft mechanic, just recently retired because, you know, why not? And more importantly, all of this is what I grew up on. All of the crazy little details about how things happen, the bicycle mechanic aspect, coming from Ohio, going to North Carolina, going to Kitty Hawk. This is one of those places I kind of want to go just because this is where aviation started. So I basically grew up with a guy who geeked out over planes and had an unfortunate habit of going into aircraft museums and trying to get into the planes that were on display, even if they were roped off and maybe not entirely safe to do so, because some of them he actually worked on. I'm thinking of a specific one in Ohio. I'm surprised no one in security stopped him from getting into that plane. Yeah. But more importantly, this right now is just massive nostalgia. <laughs> oh my day, God. The Wright brothers were world famous and thus historically significant. The history of early aviation was cemented as a place where even from humble beginnings, That's basically a great things bad were one. indeed possible if you were bold, brave, or just crazy enough to see things through. As such, the world quickly noticed and celebrated a handful of amateurs who had succeeded where many other respected institutions and noted individuals had not. Many of the smartest engineers of the Whoa. time had given up after their own failures. Oh, it's definitely based on the bat with how the wings are spread out. Nice. Someone took Many a lot of study on that. The definitely wouldn't work. Beyond their means or practically impossible. Sir Hiram Stevens' maxim was one of them. Who? Yes. Maxim gun maxim. Oh! Yes. That Hiram maxim. Yes. He too had tried to make a flying machine. And as you'd expect, it's straight out of Arcanum. Keep in mind, maxim was... Is that a... Honestly, I thought that was a parachute that was just really weird at first, but no, that's the... Oh, that is weird. Born 11 years before Melville wrote Moby Dick. Oh, wow. So his lens of the world would be, to us, very strange. And limited as that lens was, he Big made fan. up for it by being, well, Maxim. For instance, he opted not to use gasoline because it was frankly too new for the man. And back then, gasoline was seen as a dangerous if you... Gasoline plant at Pittsburgh, 1915. See, here's the thing. I know where that's at. That's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There's an H at the end of that. Also because there, Pittsburgh without an H is actually a town in California. I know. It's weird. There's more than one useless waste byproduct of petrochemical it wasn't until 19 or 1892 that gasoline was understood to be valuable fuel until then it was discarded sometimes straight into rivers okay so literally nothing is different now because people still do that it's annoying I, yeah i know it well mostly it's just runoff and extra but people still do that it, it's disturbing it's why you actually need filtration you don't actually drink straight from a river Distillation process. One of the many reasons, actually. They used to just dump or pour gasoline wherever they could, or burned it off as quickly as they made it. Maxim Sten was of the old school, Whoa. which means he was a fanatic steam enthusiast like all enterprising gentlemen of the period. So he decided his flying machine would be powered by twin naphtha fired steam engines rated at 360 horsepower. I mean, that would work if you had a way faster engine. But for the materials he was using, those things were freaking light, man. That thing would just weigh it down. Oh, and that's probably why it didn't work. Looks really impressive, and honestly, it would probably go well in a car. Because that's and I think they did have steam-powered cars at the time, too. Problems. Mind you, this is in contrast to the Wright brothers' own successful aircraft engine, which developed 12 horsepower. It also weighed under 200 pounds. Maxims did not. Maxim was... Oh, that's the engine back there? Dear God, I mean, later on, an engine that powerful might work in a bigger plane. Also, those are propellers. Or are they impellers? I can't tell if they're before or after him. I honestly don't know. Perhaps excessive, but his aircraft design was significantly heavier than air and most cars at the time. And his okay, they didn't have cars back then. Okay. Revolutionary, but far too heavy for something that should but fly. But it does look like it would power. work if 
more powerful. For steam fans out there, it is of note that they could raise available steam pressure from 100 to 200 pounds per square inch oh. in a single minute. Maxim being Maxim, when the batshit thing didn't fly right, he instead engineered what was called a captive flying machine. Flying machines will therefore be employed. Oh, sorry, uh, let me get that voice right. <laughs> will all be employed by the rich and highly civilized nations, small nations, and half civilized tribes. Will still have to content themselves with their present mode of warfare. Hero Maxim, 1891. I mean, technically, that is accurate. That is what happened. Nations that can't afford air forces don't. Granted, they usually just buy from nations that could afford to sell air forces. Such as a few that were trying to be purchased out by Tex, and they failed because someone else bought it first. This is why you need to go on Texas Patreon, so that next time an Air Force is for sale, the Black Panther Legion can literally buy one because that was an actual thing that happened. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just love the fact that it was actually a thing. Someone actually was selling an Air Force. I think it was Albania. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maxim was pretty damn prolific. Yes, the guy who invented these goofy rides for theme parks also invented the modern belt-fed machine gun. And Wait, he invented the ride? Oh, the captive flying machine gun. Okay. Yes, I'd love to do a profile on him sometime. How come you have it? Oh, because you have a million things to do. His life is just as splendidly contrasted by whimsy and madness. Contextual tangent aside. I mean, honestly, the way Tex is describing him is he sounds like everyone portrays Edison as. Uh... Edison was a, uh, to put it in the least derogatory way possible, a goddamn motherfucker. The more you learn about him, the more you realize he was an absolutely horrible person. You look at some of the robber barons and they're looking at him going like, I appreciate just how dickish you can get. Teach me, master. Unironically, that, well, would never be said that way, is not entirely inaccurate. Maxim? Honestly, sounds way cooler already. Just because I don't know nearly enough bad shit about him, so I'm already wanting to know more. Right. After many notable and incredibly expensive failures, the Wright brothers seemingly proved yep. that aviation was a business which favored small, independent startups building practical, if revolutionary, products. Further, the Wright brothers' success story suggested... That oh, homecoming reception for the White, br White brothers. Wow. Wright brothers in Dayton, Ohio. And that's probably why the air... I think it's the Air Force Museum, actually, that is in Dayton. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Also, I didn't realize Dayton had this many people at this time period. I'm a little biased. My family's in Toledo. That just about anybody could be a plane tycoon overnight. To prove that point, prior to aircraft as a business, William E. Boeing was a Yale-educated lumber entrepreneur. In 1909, though, Boeing was in lumber before Boeing. I wow. Um, that's like saying Ford's previous ventures before making the Ford or the Ford Motor Company would be self-inflicted wounds. You know what? Actually, never mind. That would not be a joke. That's literally no different than driving a Ford. But like, if he was a farmer prior, it's like I like that. But now we're going to make things that are mass producible. I, I just. Boeing was into lumber, that is. Yale educated? Sure, massive company, I could see that. Lumber! For anyone who doesn't know what the Boeing company is, look at every giant ass commercial airplane that usually hauls freight, tanks, sometimes whales. I'm not even joking about that. Again, like I said, my dad was an aircraft mechanic. Sometimes they were the ones installing the whale aquariums for SeaWorld when they had to transport them. On sometimes Boeing's when they could afford to get a Boeing to do it, and that just that, I'm this. This is the kind of fact I'm going to make my dad sit down and watch this because he's just going to be like, "I did not know that. I must watch everything." He gets hyper focused like I do sometimes when it comes to really cool shit like this, and I know he'll love this now. <laughs> oh, he bought the Heath shipyard at the mouth of the Duwamish River, or as it would be called in time. Boeing plant number one. Oh, dude. And this was a time of auspicious beginnings, as between the Wright brothers and Boeing, there was a number of enthusiastic pioneers at work, each oh? advancing the field the of others? aviation. One hop, skip, and crash at it. Glenn Curtis, Graham Bell, and Louis Bellirot? Probably French. You see a little uh, Tilde. 
I don't know them, but a bell sounds familiar. Time. Wait, Graham Bell. Wasn't that, that the Bell decade, Company? Glenn Curtis worked for Dr. Alexander Graham Bell. Oh, yeah. The Aerial Experiment Association, which provided... I see we found the test pilot. I did funding, direction, and research to Bring produce a rapid succession of successful aircraft out of nothing but crazy ideas. <laughs> Well, pretty awesome for early aviation, AEA had a limited mandate, <sighs> and when the funding ran dry, Bell extended it with additional financing, as he realized aeronautics was pretty much the coolest thing in the world at the time. It was very niche. He's probably not mad. Glenn Clarence just looks like that. Oh, so he had resting bitch face. Yeah, I know people like that. Also, when Tex said he expanded to additional sources, did he invent the telephone? To fund airplane construction? This is literally the coolest time period in history, just for this alone. I mean, everything else going around in this time period, fucked up. This part alone is just so freaking cool, man. Mostly unregulated, hilariously expensive, extremely loud, and with the occasional explosion offered as scientific... <laughs> <laughs> they crashed right into a lake. No, that's a beach because those are the old lifeguard stands on a roadway. Now, this might be a... It's going, this is a race course that had a lake in it. Oh, wow. Crashing in Seattle, 1910. He was unhurt and flew again the next day. <laughs> Entertainment. It was a natural field for Dr. Bell to go. Oh, to. Charles Stuart Rolls was not as fortunate. He died on July of the same year in Southbourne, England. Yeah. Dr. Bell was like that. He worked on a few things you might recognize, like hydrofoils. Really? A telephone. Yeah. Founding AT&T. Eh. And then in 1880, he gave... AT&T, don't worry, we used to be really good. And then we got so good, the government literally broke us up. And then we never recovered. If you have AT&T service, you realize, it's great where it works. And it doesn't work many places. That's the photophone, which photophone? used light to send communication wirelessly. Seriously? It's basically fiber optic, but without the fiber and all the optic. That? I, I need to hear that again. That is. Founding AT&T. And then in 1880, he gave us the photophone, which used light to send communication wirelessly. Again, in 1880. These were only some. I can get the downside of that because ambient light would probably disrupt it just because it would put too much signal into the receiving point. But in a darkened environment that's controlled, that's... If the power consumption wasn't that high, I'm surprised more people didn't do that because it would just be really efficient. Granted, creating a darkened environment without any bullshit happening and then you have to find any bullshit that did happen along the way, but... That is so cool! I didn't even know that kind of stuff existed! It was the 1800s?! <laughs> Text, this is such a hard video to watch right now because you're just like all these cool jump off points like make a video on this, make a video on this, make it. It's like watching your text talks battle tech videos, except there's somehow more cool jumping off points. How the hell did you do that? It, it's the first seven minutes. I'm geeking out on a constant basis. I don't even. If this is what Texas channel, if this is what the Black Pants Legion's channel becomes, just all these cool jumping off videos. Frankly, Tex is going to need to get paid a lot more for this, and I, by that I mean they're going to have to face Tex and literally strap him down and force the money into his bank account at his protest. I've talked to Tex about it. He does not like it. He just does not want to take the money, and I've heard other people comment. Sometimes the people who did do it to him, who got him to do that, and honestly, just, this guy needs to be funded better because I want this, what he's doing right now, how he's telling the stories. I want more stories. I want more history. I want more of this. They just need a bigger crew to make more. And the only way to do that is to go on his Patreon and support him. I'm hawking it right now because I want this, damn it. I'm of his dabblings. The man was prolific and he was not selfish. Also, I love the background music. Resources. Just and like Dr. the smooth, like 20s jazz. That's smooth, yeah. Fields which paved the way for many future innovations. As eccentric inventors go, he oh, was the pretty eyes. much the model of getting shit done and putting resources where they might have a chance at actually doing some good. Oh, so when that last part's weird. A finally shut down, Curtis and when Dr. Bell's boat. graciously extended experimental mandate concluded, 
Glenn Curtis partnered with Augustus Moore Herring to form the Herring Curtis Company. Sounds familiar. They named 1910 to the Curtis Airplane Company. That really sounds familiar. Also, as a glider setup, this isn't bad if they just... Actually, now that I think about it, this triangle design is basically modern gliders. He's just lower down in the new ones, and the these are further up. Frankly, decentralizing it actually makes the glider work correctly. Weird. They would go on to provide the world with some of the best aircraft of that era. <laughs> I recognize the these. Ever made. An F-7C Seahawk for the U.S. Navy. This is the design. Like, when you think biplanes, this is the design that became the most usable immediately. Oh, my God. And while these early pioneers were turning bold ideas into Boat products planes. that actually changed the world, and through that, becoming world famous, fabulously wealthy, or powerful, there were naturally those what? who saw such greatness and desired it for themselves. Yeah. Whether they were capable or not, qualified or not, they too desired a slice of the pie. And so there was another... Egg box, Vickers Vinny, and the rep number two. I think I've seen this one before, actually. This one I don't know about, and this one I have never seen before, so I'm assuming it crashed. Oh, there's a wheel on the wing. Oh, that's really low to the ground. Wow. Why is it at the front? Another guy who started a company in the shadow of these soon-to-be giants. He, too, was a doctor who had fostered an intense interest in aeronautics. His name enters the historical record as Dr. William Whitney Christmas. Oh, and he proposed actually was a doctor. The there are other spellings and names involved. Yes, this is foreshadowing. Oh my god. Other names and spellings. Of course, Christmas is actually his name. And they're using the freaking snake oil salesman font for this one that you see on all the good old timey. This is Dr. Insert Here's Cure to Everything. Yep, that, that's actually the font they used, isn't it? Asian world <laughs> through his dynamic genius. Loaded with delicious details. The new Green Goddess Caprese Melt from Panera. Chapter 1, Dr. Christmas. Oh, actually, I actually have a picture. While many historians, we already saw aviation something. experts, Still. eyewitnesses, correspondents, and primary sources are swift to judge Dr. William Whitney Christmas. Why? In no particular order as a liar, con man, cheat, shyster, pretender, rogue, defrauder, quack, scammer, chiseler, rascal, imposter, crook, charlatan, or wholesale crazy person. Damn. I mean, the foreshadowing kind of showed it, and the snake oil salesman font definitely hit it home, but why? Why was he so much all of these? But also text that he changed the world. Is it really a matter of he did something so absurd that it made everyone react to it so that it wouldn't happen again? I'm assuming that's where it's going to go. I could be wrong, though. I'd rather start with the honest facts before we proceed to the wholesale, and I assure you, exhaustively researched character assassination. Let us Whoa. begin the odyssey of Dr. Christmas by stating a the historical record that William Whitney Christmas was, in fact, a very real doctor. Oh! As in, he had proceeded down a course of education, instruction, and certifications. Bachelors? Challenging study and application of knowledge? He has a master's? Deliberately in succession in order to become a qualified doctor of medicine. Up to this point... Okay, I wasn't expecting to actually be a doctor of medicine. I know he had D or MD, but... Or DM, whatever. But I was really expecting to be something weird, like Doctor of Finance. Doctor of Methodology. Doctor of Acting. I don't even know if they would act that out at this point. Yeah, but just... Huh. I was not expecting it to actually life, be real. It is a normal progression of events in sequence to produce a reasonable outcome. Yeah. This is called... Doctor, realize it's easier to con people in a burgeoning industry profit. Honestly, you don't even need burgeoning industry, just easier to con people in general. <sighs> Foreshadowing. As far Looking as at UNFTs. Chairman, Dr. William Whitney. North Carolina. That is his hometown? Oh, that's probably a school, isn't it? Not his home, his hometown, not his home. Okay. Christmas was likely born in 1865. Likely born? As far as we can prove, he attended St. John's Military Academy oh? for his bachelor's degree and the University of Virginia for his master's. Wow. He then graduated from George Washington University in 1905 as a legitimate doctor of medicine. Huh. So for the record, everything that follows began as a garden variety medical doctor 
early in his professional years, which I'm sure helped him design aircraft. I mean, honestly, it's not the dumbest thing. It's not the best thing either, but it's not the dumbest thing. But let's not laugh too soon. For those of you finding this idea completely ridiculous, I did ask you to- These yearbooks seem to have a lot of faith in their students. Wait, what does it say? Laugh too soon. For those of you finding this idea completely ridiculous, I did ask you to- It says medicine is literally just mirrors tied together with skull and crossbones when it says medicine. Wow, those are your books. That's actually in the yearbook? Oh, and it's also tied together with a knot that's burning. That's not faith in it. That's like saying, <laughs> Oh, uh, you are all going to do horrible, horrible things. It's a good thing medical malpractice isn't something we get sued for. Keep something in mind earlier. We have established that aviation is a business from humble beginnings. Yep. The Wright brothers, prior to their success, made and fixed bicycles. Hiram Maxim was an insane serial hobbyist who occasionally got things near perfect. Yep. Boeing had been a lumber tycoon. Glenn Curtis liked motorcycles. All of these oh, people actually, that one probably something else. Honestly, out of all of them, motorcycles is probably the closest profession just because... I think that's actually how Honda got into it. Because they were a motorcycle company that became a plane company. And now they're a car company. Yeah, I know, it's weird. Or was that Toyota? I actually don't know which one. It might have been both. It might very well be both. Still though, motorcycles, the engine design for what is later used rather than the early ones is very similar, just the spinning reel. And because of how that applies to a propeller, it is very much a thing. Instead of just having a wheel going forward, you have a wheel going across. It's just a difference of vertical to horizontal orientation by comparison to the engine. So it actually makes a lot of sense there. Out of all of them, that's probably the easiest transition. Smoke where they found great success in the early years of aviation. So why not a medical doctor? The answer to that question takes us to June of 1914. Yeah. When the empires of Europe decided to go gloves off for the intercontinental heavyweight title of titles. They World called War it the one. Great War until we had another one that eclipsed the first. Okay, goddamn text. You basically have me bait right here. It's it's flying machines. It's like the creation of the entire industry about how to do aviation. It's all the crazy techniques and inventors getting in on something and failing and making crazy stuff and pulling it together and just starting up crazy things. Am I stuck on the crazy aspect? Because yes, this is awesome and I want all of this. If text just came back and did a bunch of side videos that were short little excerpts of all the people he mentioned, I would love this. That would be an absolute amazing series for me. I'm not sure if anyone else watched it, but I would live watching that thing because that is so freaking cool. And right now we get someone who's way more colorful, it sounds like. My biggest takeaway is this guy was not a fraud up until he became one somehow during the World War I time. What the hell are we about to get into? I'm kind of this year mostly because I have to adult because in-laws are coming over and I probably might have already missed them arriving and I might be in trouble. But more importantly, also because this is so cool. I'm just my rewatch. There's just so many things. I'm geeking out. I, I need a cooling down time period and considering they're already probably here, I'm very late. But more importantly, Tex, thank you for making this. <laughs> this is so cool, man. So if you haven't already, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit this up. And just let Tex know that this is such a great idea, that if this is how he's going to treat historical events, he's not going with the easy ones. He's going with the obscure charlatan who may or may not still be known outside of the industry. And I want to know why. What the fuck did this guy do? How did he do it? What changed things? I'm assuming he screwed around so hard as something good came of it. Or it was so bad that they had to keep it from happening again, which is usually how most of that happens. And I just... I'm excited, man. I'm really excited for this. Again, there's a link below. Hit it up. And if you like this, subscribe. Me, text, take your pick. Do it. The Black Pants Legion's awesome. Make sure to subscribe to them if you haven't already. I... Okay, I, I definitely am. I just have to double check. There's been a few times I haven't. So yeah, I'm just gonna go um, de-geek out before family gets here. And I'll see you guys later. Adios.